Today, we have the Wing Freedom X electric bike. It's like a road commuter style electric bike. And if you ask me, it looks very similar to the Van Moof electric bike. One of the big differences is it's much cheaper in price. So the price is lower, which is good, but is the bike any good? I don't know. So let's build it and see what it's all about. This one comes with gray tires and a brown saddle. Silver pedals, tools, and some fancy lights. Pretty light bike. So we got a few zip ties and packaging to get off. Disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors, 26 by 1.5 inch wide tires. Wing. Oh, look at this built in display up here. Hand grips match the saddle. What are these keys? This looks like car keys. We'll have to check this out in a moment. Controls, seven speed Shimano shifter. Since I got the silver one, everything is pretty much silver matched, which is pretty cool. Snip, snip. What do we got? That's where the battery goes. What are we working with here? 36 volt, 10.5 amp hour, 374 watt hours of energy. Two amp charger. So that'd be about five hours of charge time from empty or two and a half if you only use half the battery. Color match fenders. Dude, they do not mess around with their packaging. This thing is bundled up. This is a freaking disaster. There we go, that's better. Just got a few things to put on. Pretty unique way this seat attaches. Shimano Turney derailleur, and we have a wing branded hub motor. Looks like a 350 watt motor. So I chose the silver color just to do something a little bit different. I feel like there's so many black bikes out there. This one's just a little more unique, and I think it looks pretty sharp. Oh, <laughs> cool noise, that kind of surprised me. So I'll throw those fenders on in just a minute, but uh, I'm kind of too excited to get up here and see what this thing's all about. Oh, whoa, this thing's got like an alarm. Wow, so let's do unlock. <laughs> okay, lock. Wow, and it's alarmed. If you, if you try to remove the battery, look at this. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. All right, let's turn this thing on. Display looks pretty good. Let's tap through the options here. Shows your watts. Odometer and trip, cool. Pedal assist. Five levels of pedal assist. I'm guessing there's some sort of loud horn. Let's try it. Oh yeah. <laughs> See what those headlights look like. Pretty bright, wow. That is actually a very bright headlight. That tail light looks clean too, also. Very bright. Look at that reflecting off of here. You will be seen riding this bike. Also, there is a brake light. Grab the brake. You see that light lighting up? So if you're wondering where the thumb throttle is, right here. The thumb throttle is optional. So you don't have to put this on your bike. If you want to get more exercise, you may be better off just not putting it on there. I'll probably be. All right, dudes, got the thumb throttle installed. Also through the rack on the front. This thing will definitely add a little bit of weight to your bike. So if you're not really planning on carrying a lot of stuff, maybe you should skip the rack. Since I have it, we'll go ahead and bring my bag of goodies, including the keys. So we'll try out uh, these alarms and stuff. One thing right away that I like about this rack is it is not attached to the handlebars. It's attached to the frame. So it does not affect your steering. It's actually kind of trippy turning the steering wheel and seeing the uh, rack not rotate with it. So for the 20% grade hill test on a bike like this, 36 volts, it's really not, it doesn't even make sense to try, you know, climbing it under throttle only. These commuter style bikes are just not meant to do that sort of thing. So you definitely want to get, you know, if it's a steep hill, you want to go into it with a bit of a rollout. The gears definitely help you climb a steep hill though. And power seems like it definitely helps. All right, so let's take the Wing Freedom X out for a little ride today. I'll give you my first impressions and just we'll do a pretty thorough review on this bike. So starting out, uh, let's just do pedal assist zero. No, pedal assist one for starters. Starting on gear three, 
kicks in right away, not much of a lag at all. From the time you start turning the pedals, I'd say maybe like a quarter second. So pretty quick uh, response. Takes us up to, I don't know if you can read that on the screen or not, but it's saying 11 miles an hour, 11.6. So gentle, you know, nice little assist. Actually feels like a very comfortable bike. These swept back handlebars and ergonomic shaped grips that have a rubbery feel to them. Uh, makes for a nice riding position. We'll bump it up, pedal assist too. Feel a little bump in assistance. We'll shift up a gear to four, snappy shifter as expected. Typical turny shifter, Shimano turny. Holds us at about 15, no, 14 miles an hour for pedal assist two and pedal assist three. Got a little bit of wind out here today, so hopefully that doesn't interfere with the audio. Pedal Assist 3 takes us all the way up to 17.8, 18 miles an hour. Actually, it's taking us all the way to 19, 19.5. So right around 19 miles an hour on a full charge for Pedal Assist 3. From a stop, we'll try the Toronto Pedal Assist 3. It's very gentle on the Toronto, so it's definitely conserving that battery helping you get longer range. We'll do a zero to top speed on top pedal assist here in just a few. By the way, I do weigh 200 pounds. So your performance results of this bike, you can base off my weight. If you weigh less, you'll get better range and speed. Also, I'm six foot five. And you know, I thought that this bike was gonna feel small on me. However, that's not the case. I feel fine on this bike. So we'll be merging into traffic here. I uh, better bump it on up to pedal assist four. And we'll do five to see the top speed shortly. Feels like a nice bike to ride. Like going over the bumps and stuff, I feel like these tires are wide enough and meaty enough that they absorb bumps. Get a little head start on the traffic here. Pedal assist four, better go. Pedal assist five. Come on, five. It's helping me up to about 23 miles an hour. Woo! Get a little merging of traffic here. A little lane splitting on the wing. Now keep in mind this is a commuter style bike. It's not meant to like launch and be super fast, but let's see what it can do under thumb throttle only. Zero to top speed. Ready, go. So it definitely eases on that power. Very gentle from a stop. 10, 12, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20, and it'll help you beyond 20, all the way to max speed, 22.5, and we're on an uphill now and stop sign. So first impressions on the wing, Freedom, 10, 10 amp hour battery, 10.4 amp hour battery. I like it. This is actually, it's a very comfortable commuter style bike. I'd have to say, you know, just this riding position is quite nice with the swept back handlebars and the ergonomic grips. It just really puts you in a nice upright riding position that's comfortable for cruising around town. I totally forgot to throw the bike on the scale to see how much it weighs before I put that rack on there. We'll weigh it when I get home. Uh, I think it said 39 pounds without the rack. I think the rack probably adds probably a solid three to four pounds. So if you want to keep the weight down, skip the rack. Of course, I always like to check and see how accurate that speedometer is. Pretty much reading the same exact number. This is GPS in my hand. That's the built-in speedometer in the screen there. Going into a little more modest hill. Uh, see how this handles the hill on pedal assist. We'll bump it up to pedal assist four for the hill. Yeah, I mean, the wing Freedom X can handle gentle hills. And while I am trying not to rely on using the thumb throttle too much, uh, it is nice to just kind of get the bike rolling from a stop. Just has, you know, a little, little boost for you. So the seat on this bike, it's uh, relatively narrow. It's, it's definitely got some good squish to it and I feel comfortable on this seat. Generally, I prefer like a little bit wider seat on these cruiser style bikes, but you know, this one actually works just fine. Let's go ahead and raise it up a bit. So I had it quite a bit down. It can come up a lot higher go ahead and put it about here. Kind of wonder what happens if you press a lock button while you're riding it. Nada. Oh, it'll make the unlock noise if you press unlock. 
but it won't lock. <laughs> can you sound the alarm? Oh yeah, you can. It's got the horn. All right, so let's go ahead and park it. And from a distance, press the lock button. Uh, do you have to turn it off? Yeah, you probably have to turn it off first. Actually, real quick, let's do a range update. It's showing five miles and full five bars. I mean, it's not full. So we'll see what kind of range we actually get. So with it turned off, we'll press the lock button. And now, I guess it's locked. So if I, oh yeah, if I, if I try to move it, it starts giving me some like warnings. And like if I roll off with it, <laughs> while you're moving it has this pretty loud alarm which doesn't really seem to be attracting any attention of anybody so over here by the police station I'm kind of curious like if the cops will do anything let's turn this thing off arm it other stuff so let's talk about the brakes a little bit they are mechanical disc brakes and the bike weighs around 40 pounds so a lot of times you know like heavier bikes fat tire e-bikes that weigh like 70 pounds i say hydraulic disc brakes are kind of you know the gold standard for a bike that's wider like this mechanical disc brakes are probably fine they bring the bike to a stop for sure they don't really feel as crisp and grippy as hydraulic disc brakes but i mean they definitely work so if you did have hydraulic disc brakes you know it'd probably feel a little better let's bring it up to a higher speed now bring it up to about like 20 miles per hour so on a commuter bike like this at a budget price point you know keeping that price down i'd have to say these bikes are uh, certainly sufficient one more grab of the brakes here a range update this is the first time i've seen four out of five bars at mile six point something that's probably a little voltage sag but just showing ya, dudes i gotta tell you i'm embarrassed but um i'm just now realizing this bike actually has a torque sensor this is not a cadence sensor so that's actually big time that means so i have this thing on pedal assist five and i noticed it you know when i was on pedal assist four you know that means this thing is like very intuitive for giving you assistance. So I'm on pedal assist five, just giving it like a light input. And the bike's giving me just like a little bit of help. So it actually has a little watt meter here and I'm pedaling very lightly and it shows, you know, like 25 watts there on the display, even though it's on pedal assist five, but the moment that I start ramping up my input, it will basically just match all the way up to, well, now it's giving me 490 watts so this is actually awesome so torque sensors are like way more awesome than cadence sensors so the problem with like cadence sensor bikes is they give you kind of like jumps between like power levels and it's kind of hard to you know manage how much power you're getting from the motor but bumping on down to like pedal assist three now you know i'm going all out it'll only give me like basically a maximum of 300 watts and then if i bump my power down it kind of reduces how much it's helping me too down to around, you know, 100. So check it out. This bike is not a hill climbing bike, but let's go ahead and bump it down a couple gears, put it in gear two and pedal assist five. We'll roll into this hill going about seven miles an hour and now all out effort, see what it can do. Bump it down to gear one. So it can climb this hill, which is pretty steep with you know, I'm helping it. But if there's like a ton of steep hills in your area or you plan on doing a ton of hill climbs, this you might be look, you might be wanting a bike that has a little bit more power and torque. Just to give you an idea, that's the kind of elevation we just gained right there. Let's go see what that van move looks like compared to this bike. This thing will definitely zip, zippity, zippity. Bike lane. 
Nice little city commuter. Oh yeah, van move. See what this thing looks like compared. So I mean side by side. Fan move looks probably a little cleaner, less less wires kind of dangling out and stuff. Not really sure on all the specs of that, but you know you can see they have like a similar headlight. Similar headlight. And then they have the tail lights like this as well. How much are these things? 1911. 25% off for that. That's like the X model though. Oh, this one is 58 miles on this one. It's uh, 2166, 15% off. Relaxed handlebars on the van move as well. Looks like hydraulic disc brakes. Oh, the motor's on the front of the uh, van move. Interesting, they have the hub motor up on the front. Front wheel drive bike versus rear wheel on the wing. Anyway, just thought I would stop by and compare these up right quick since I'm over here. I don't even know where that display is built in on this bike. Oh, you know what? I think their display is like right down there. Very, very, very similar bikes. Price would be the big difference. Do you like this bike? Is it a van move or? Uh... No, it's actually not. It's a wing, but it's, it's it kind looks... of, yeah, it looks very similar to a van move, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, I thought, oh yeah, I can see that, wow. Yes. Uh, do you like it? Yeah, it's great, man. It's a, I'm doing a little review on it right now. It's got a torque sensor, and I want right. to say this one's like 1,200 bucks or something. Okay, yeah. So I, I think know, the, their price point's way higher than that. Yeah, I think they started like- I mean, they're like, great, but they, yeah. they opened a shop in, uh, in Santa Monica. Yeah, I, I, I actually just went past there to kind of put them side by side and just right. kind of- When I came up on you, I was like, I, I know I've never seen one with a back hub or anything, so, or, so I was like, oh, maybe it wasn't. You know? Yeah. I, you know, the giveaway is it's the round in the back. Is, is it, when I see one, I can see them from far away. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the, just, the frame style. Yeah. yeah, with the light on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, nice chat yeah. and have a good Take ride. Care. You too. And speaking of motor noise, it really hasn't even crossed my mind um, or noise from this bike really at all. The brakes don't squeak or anything like that. They're very quiet brakes and the hub motor it's very, very quiet. Some of these hub motors can tend to be a little bit whiny. This one is not. And it's overall pretty stealthy looking e-bike. I mean, the battery is not fully integrated into the tube, but the benefits of that is you can actually remove the, the battery from the frame and bring it into, you know, like your workplace, your office, or inside your home and leave the bike locked up outside. Well, I think it's always nice to have a removable battery personally. Quick little range update. It's saying four out of five bars and we are at 13 miles. Better crank it up the pedal it says five. All right, dudes, just making it back home into the neighborhood here. Did 17.4 miles today and there is three out of five bars remaining. I think they claim 45 miles of range on this bike. So it looks like we use about half the battery. So surprisingly, I think I probably would have did about 34 miles if I drained this thing all the way down to empty. And that's me at 200 pounds. So I mean, if you're putting in effort and you're not really using that uh, thumb throttle and keeping the assist level down, I could certainly see you getting 45 miles of range out of this thing. Considering it only weighs, you know, in the ballpark of like 40 pounds with the torque sensor on on this wing freedom x I gotta say i'm pleasantly surprised by this bike it rides nice it looks nice i think it's a practical commuter gets you up to about 25 miles an hour and i mean it's not a bad bike especially considering the price